Hi, greetings, fellow hunters. Want to look at Supernatural Season 2, Nagatu's on, with the episode, Hunted. Scott Carey is sitting in Dr. George Waxer's office talking about a psychic ability that started about a year ago. He discovered that when he touches something, he can electrocute it if he wants. Dr. Waxer looks down at his nose in disbelief. Scott offers to shake his hand to prove him wrong, but Dr. Waxer just asks him another question instead. We then see Scott walking through a dark parking lot toward his car. Two silver trains pass by overhead. A dark figure passes by in the shadows. As Scott unlocks his car, he sees a figure standing behind him in the reflection from the car window. He turns around the figure stabs him in the chest with a knife. Blood flows out from Scott's mouth and his body slumps against the side of the car. At the lake, Dean reveals to Sam the secret that John whispered into his ear before he died. John told Dean to protect his brother and that he had to save Sam. That if he couldn't, Dean would have to kill him. Sam's distraught and infuriated, wanting to know what the hell that's supposed to mean. Thus, more whether he's going to turn evil and what the demon's plans are for Sam start to fill his head. Dean understands that Sam is angry and he apologizes for not telling him sooner. He begs Sam to give him time and says they should lay low until they can plot out their next move. Sam is seen walking out of the motel and steals the, car, and steals the car parked next to the Impala. He arrives at an abandoned building at 5637 Monroe Street. He searches the outside of the building to make sure all is clear. He sneaks around the back door, picks open the lock, and walks in very carefully. A few seconds after entering the building, he sets off a tripwire, blowing him to pieces. Blood spews onto the screen, leaving only empty shoe, leaving only an empty shoe on the floor. Scenes of a bright light shining through a window flash briefly on the screen. We next see a young woman sitting up in bed, sweating and out of breath. The man sleeping next to her wakes up and asks what's wrong, and she tells him she had another nightmare. Sam walks in the roadhouse, nervous and afraid to face Ellen. Ellen, however, is not all surprised to see Sam, as Dean has been calling all day asking if she's seen him. Ellen wants to know what's going on between the two of them. Avoiding the question, Sam asks how Joe is doing. Ellen says she doesn't really know because after the job she did with Sam and Dean, she wanted to continue hunting. Ellen told her not under my roof, and her daughter walked out. She hasn't seen her in weeks, but Joe still sends a postcard now and then. And tells Sam that it's not their fault and that she forgave John a long time ago for what happened to her husband, Bill. Sam asks Ash to do a nationwide, to do a nationwide search for people like him with psychic abilities whose mother died in nursery fires. Ash's stated base picks up four names. Sam, Max Miller, Andy Gallagher, and Scott Carey. When Sam inquires about an address for Scott, Ash responds with a cemetery in Lafayette, Indiana. Scott died about a month ago, stabbed to death in a parking lot. Cops have no suspects in custody. As Sam heads out, as Sam heads out, Ellen says that she's got to call Dean to let him know where Sam is. Sam pleads with her not to breathe a word to Dean, telling her that he means well, but he's trying to find ans you know, answers about who he is, and that Dean can't protect him from this. Sam pays a visit to Scott's father, posing as a friend of Scott's from high school. Mr. Curry says that Scott had, had had changed a lot in the last year. It started with headaches and nightmares, then became paranoid and depressed. He said they tried to get him help, but Scott refused. He locked himself in his room for days. While searching Scott's room, Sam finds three bottles of medication on his dresser and snags one of them. In the closet by his clothes, he finds a collage of yellow eyes taped to the wall, leading Sam to believe that Scott was definitely connected with the yellow eyed demon. As Sam walks to his motel room, he notices someone sneaking up behind him. He turns around and grabs the person, pushes her up against the wall, and demands to know who she is. It's a girl who had the nightmare, and she responds with, Please, you're in danger. Inside the motel room, she introduces herself as Ava Wilson. She tries to make it clear to Sam right off the bat that she's not crazy and that she's not on drugs, but that she's been having these nightmares that started about a year ago. She really didn't think much of it. Then, about a month ago, she had a nightmare where she saw a guy get stabbed in a parking lot. A few days later, she wrote an article in the paper about Scott Carey's death, which she now shows to Sam. She continues by telling Sam that last night she had another nightmare when she saw Sam die. Sam realizes she must be one of the psychics that the demon has plans for. Ava believes Sam is insane. When asked about her mother dying in a fire, she says that her mom lives in Palm Beach, which proves that Ava doesn't fit the pattern either. Ellen calls Dean against Sam's, against Sam's wishes and tells him that Sam's in Lafayette, Indiana. Ava begs Sam to just leave town, but Sam can because he's got to find the answers he's been looking for. As far as Ava's concerned, she'll all the way out here for, 
outing from Peoria, Illinois to save Sam's ass. Since Sam's refusing to leave, she's going to leave him to his funeral. She grabs her purse and heads for the door. Sam says if she leaves now, she will never know the truth about her disturbing nightmares. Ava makes an appointment with Dr. Wexer to help Sam steal Scott Carey's file from his office. She freaks out when she sees Sam walking along the ledge outside the window of the high-rise building. To distract Dr. Wexer, she blindly tells him about how when she was a kid, she once ate eight packets of Pop Rocks and then drank a can of Coke. She asks him if that is considered a suicide attempt. Back at the motel, Ava's breathing heavily. Sam and Ava listen to the recording of Scott's visit, Scott's visit Waxler. In the recording, Scott tells Dr. Waxler that the yellow white demon has plans for him, that there is a war coming. People like him are going to be the soldiers, and everything's about to change. Dean cruises by the motel and sees Sam, and is relieved he's okay. Looking from a distance, he sees Ava starts chuckling. Sam, you sly dog. All of a sudden, shots are fired through the windows of the motel room. Sam and Ava duck behind the table, the shots are still being fired by Gordon Walker, who was stationed on the roof of the building across the street with a sniper rifle. Dean spots him and lays a few rounds of punches on him, but Gordon manages to get the upper hand by knocking him out with the back of the sniper rifle. Sam and Ava walk up to the empty roof from the building where Gordon was where, from where Gordon was firing the shots. Sam finds two or three caliber rounds, which is really that Gordon's put a suppressor on the rifle. He was officially freaked out and Sam tries to re Sam tries to assure that he's not crazy. He just watches a lot of TJ Hooker. Sam calls Dean, who's side with Gordon and holding a gun at him. Dean tells Sam to meet him at 5637 Monroe Street. Sam knows Dean's in trouble because he has the term Funky Town, which is their code word of letting each other know over the phone when there was a gun pointed at them. Sam convinces Ava to go back home because he wants her out of harm's way. At the building, Gordon tells Dean that as much as he wants to get revenge on the two of them, he's a hunter, not a killer. But as Sam, as a psychic, is fair game. With Dean tied up and gagged, Gordon explains to him that he was down in Louisiana performing a demonic exorcism on a teenage girl. She was a low-ranking demon who was, who was in the midst of, act, of the action, muttered about a coming war, that the, that the demon has soldiers fighting in this war, and the soldiers are humans fighting on Hell's side. These soldiers are going to be special children with psychic abilities, which the demon has plans for. The, de the demon said that Gordon knew one of them, Sam Winchester. Gordon knows all about Sam's visions from his own roadhouse connections. He says, he says all these special children are going to be killers. Gordon set up two trip wires in the building which will trigger the explosions with which he plans on killing Sam. As Gordon expected, Sam searches outside the building and heads around to the back door, walking right into Ava's vision. With Dean gagged and still tied to the chair, Sam picks open the lock of the back door and, being extremely cautious, walks in slowly. The first explosion goes off and breaks down part of the wall, pieces of wood flying all directions. Dean screams through the gag, with tears coming out of his eyes. A few seconds later, the second explosion goes off. Gordon takes a sample rifle and peeks into the other room to make sure that Sam is dead. He sees Sam's shoe on the ground and assures he, and assumes he's dead. Little does he know, Sam is right behind him with a gun of his own, demanding Gordon drop his weapon. Gordon slowly lays a sniper on the ground, but unexpectedly turns around and throws a punch at Sam. However, Sam might just get Gordon back to the ground, holding the sniper rifle at his head. Gordon yells up, Do it! Do it! Show your brother the killer you really are, Sammy! However, Sam is close, but manages to stop himself from pulling the trigger and instead bangs Gordon once more in the head with the back of the rifle. Sam quickly ties Dean and Dean is immediately ready to waste Gordon, but Sam stops him, saying Gordon's been taken care of. Sam and Dean are walking back to the Impala, but suddenly Gordon walks out of the building with two guns and hand firing shots in every which way. Sam and Dean run as fast as they can, ducking at every shot fired. The high point of patch of tall grass, and as Gordon approaches the intersection, Five squad cars surround him, ordering him to drop his weapons. Gordon's taken care of at least for a good three or four years, provided that he doesn't escape. Dean gives Ellen a call, completely pissed off that she told Gordon about Sam's visions. Ellen denies telling anyone about Sam, but Dean is convinced that she must have told someone because Gordon said he had Roadhouse connections. She says that she's not disloyal and that she didn't breathe a word of this to anyone, but that the Roadhouse is full of hunters each with their own patterns and connections. Gordon could have gotten this information from anyone. On the road, Sam makes several attempts to get hold of Ava to make sure that she is alright, but only gets her voicemail. Sam tells his brother that he wants to keep hunting, 
I do like Dean to keep having his back. Dean just says, bitch, and Sam answers, jerk, and smiles. Sam, however, is about feeling convinces Dean to head back over, to head over to Peoria to check on Eva. At Eva's house, Sam and Dean find her, beyond, find her fiance, Brady, dead in their bedroom with bloodstains over the bed. Traces of sulfur are found along the edge of the window, proving that a demon's been there. At the foot of the bed, Sam finds Ava's engagement ring. Uh-oh. Sam so takes a look at some continuity surrounding this episode. This is the first appearance of Ava Wilson. Ellen Harville previously appeared in No Exit. Ash previously appeared in Simon Said. Gordon Walker previously appeared in Bloodlust. And now let's take a look at some trivia surrounding this episode. Dean has a code word phone is in trouble and a gun is being held on him. Funky Town. Dean reveals to Sam that John had ordered Dean to kill Sam should he turn evil. CW's official summary for this episode is spelled special Ava as Eva. Eva is a character from the animated series. And now finally, let's take a look at some errors. Some injuries are absent during the Apollo raid, but the cuts and bruises appear once he is inside Ava's house. The amount of beer in the glass changes between shots when Sam is talking to Ash at the bar. Sam looks at the spin brass casing from the rival that was shooting at them, and since the shooter was using a two two a two twenty three caliber sub was using two twenty three caliber subsonic rounds with a suppressor. Rounds is two hundred thirty three, but as the caliber is representing tens and hundreds of an inch, the proper way to say it is 223 or 223 is also commonly used. Some experienced the firearms would not pronounce the caliber the way Sam did. Also, it's not possible to tell if someone was using subsonic, subsonic ammo just by, just by examining a spent casing. What makes around subsonic is the weight of the bullet. A subsonic round has a bullet that is heavier than most bullets of that caliber. The x ray makes the bullet too heavy to travel faster than the speed of sound. So in order to tell if it was a subsonic round, one would need to see the bullet before it was fired. Hmm, huh, did not know that. So I think this episode is kind of interesting, and the fact that we get to see another one of the special children is also kind of interesting, so yeah. But yeah, I do not like... Also, I am not a fan of that Gordon Walker person, so there you go. <laughs> so overall, I give the episode Hunted 4 Impalas out of 5. Well, anyway, tune in by we took a look at the next episode, Playthings. So, until then, carry on, my wayward sons and daughters.